Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's first video. We're doing the ECMW Extended uh, look at for the UK and rest of Europe too. For today's uh, first video, this is your 30 day slash six weeks uh, look ahead. Um, traditionally, always a 30 day forecast, but we do look at weeks five and six days as well. Because why not? So uh, I'll get on that for you in a moment. Uh, just say there wasn't a 6 a.m. upload. That's my birthday yesterday, and I had the uh, night off to have a meal and a, a few drinks. And uh, so I've been relaxing slash sobering up this morning. That's why I'm a little bit late with uh, with the video. But um, but yeah, I'm going to get on with this, and then I'll have the uh, 10 to 14 day coming up for you later on. Why not have a relaxed, uh, you know, after birthday day, why not? Why not? Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much to ECMDF.INT for supplying the charts as well, by the way. Right, so we're going to start off having a look at the week one. I mean, you see level pressure anomaly for Europe. This is for the current week, 17th to 24th of October. So this week we'll see quite a bit of high pressure in the uh, North Atlantic and reaching into many parts of uh, Europe as well. It's stretched away from Iceland down towards Italy. And over, of course, the Black Sea too. There are two areas of low pressure. We've got a big trough out to the west of the UK, Ireland, uh, France and Spain, Portugal. And we've also got a trough of low pressure up here in the extreme northeast of Europe. So we're going to be drawing up like a southerly type flow up the western side of Europe between the high pressure to the north and east of the low pressure out of the Atlantic. And then this trough is going to bring down colder air, I think, into that north northeastern part of uh, Europe with that trough of low pressure. The 500 millibar height anomaly looks like that for this week. So high pressure is dominating again from the Atlantic into most of Europe. Low pressure is out to our west and southwest and also away to our northeast too. Right, so that's how the temperature anomaly is shaping up this week. And we can see that most parts of Europe are above average. It is cooler over here in the far eastern and southeastern part of Europe. So we've got some cool air through there. We also have some quite cool air uh, heading in towards Norway. So from Iceland through the Norwegian Sea towards southern parts of Norway in particular. And just into the south of Sweden. Uh, a little bit uh, a little bit cooler there. Otherwise, though, above average temperatures generally through, through most areas. So, like Ireland and Portugal in the far west, all the way over to the Russian border in the northeast, and most points in between above average, and particularly warm weather during those southerly winds, which is like through Spain into France, where at its core, we're like uh, 6 to 10 degrees above average in that deep red shading. Uh, so, so really, really uh, warm, you know, for the time of year. And uh, most areas, up west side Europe, around 3 to 6 degrees above average. That does not extend into the UK and Ireland as well. It extends into the low countries, into Germany, uh, into Italy too. So, um, very, very mild week, uh, quite a warm week. Across most parts of Western Europe, but cooler in the extreme southeast and also in that extreme northern part of Europe. Precipitation wise, we look like that. Bit of a three way split, so it's drier than average in the North Atlantic through Iceland into northern Scotland, then on into Scandinavia, including Denmark and uh, Norway, Sweden, and up towards Finland as well. Though around the Baltic Sea states of Latvia, Estonia, and Lithuania, it does get a little bit more unsettled through there. And that unsettled weather then backs further westwards through Ireland and into. England, Wales, and into France, uh, low countries, uh, Germany as well, eastern parts of, uh, or I should say western parts of Poland, uh, a little bit west of the north too, and looks very wet down towards Spain, Portugal, doesn't it, especially like towards the Atlantic, so, so northern Spain, and uh, much of Portugal looking really, really wet there, and sending into some central parts of Spain too. Conversely, there is another drier slot though, from eastern Spain through most of the Mediterranean, uh, through through uh, the Balearic Islands and uh, Corsica, Sardinia, Italy, uh, and then over the Adriatic into the Balkans, and then on in towards the most eastern parts of Europe, up to the Black Sea, and down to Greece and Turkey, more or less looking dry than normal through those areas. So not a bad week for uh, popping down to the bed and getting some uh, late sunshine in, uh, in those Mediterranean islands, maybe, if you'd like to do that. 
Right, well, that's week one done. Week two will be the 24th to the 31st of October. We look like that. So the high pressure looks like it's slipping more towards southern parts of Europe. Really. So high pressure is slipping south and easting towards Mediterranean. Low pressure deepening in the Atlantic and pushing into the west of the Europe. I wonder if the ridge could still be clinging on through this white area. Just seeing yeah, that's where things are a little bit more unsettled. Let's have a look at the 500 millibar height anomaly and see how that is shaping up. So that does imply that like the ridge is still there from the north extending through into southern parts of Europe with the low pressure out to the west. So fundamentally the pattern might not be that different actually than that trough of low pressure with the colder air into the western part of uh, Russia maybe. The temperature anomaly looks like that. Another very warm week to come, actually there through the final week of October with significantly above average temperatures in most parts of Europe. Again, particularly so in the West. So England, Wales, um, uh, three to six degrees above average. Most parts of France, below country, Belgium, the Netherlands, Germany, into east parts of Spain, uh, the central bowl of the Med and northern Italy. And then over the Asiatic into all the Balkans and those, uh, some eastern parts of Europe. A lot of uh, those areas are in those deep red shadings, which is three to six degrees above normal. Uh, more widely, we're like one to three degrees above normal through much of northern Europe. In fact, you really do have to go over just to the very, very far southwestern corner of Russia to find anything a little bit below average. And then just into one or two of the Mediterranean islands as well. Um... In that eastern portion of the bed, where it's uh, it's a little bit uh, cooler than normal there. But it's a very mild week to come there through the second half of October. And um, precipitation-wise, not that much change either. So, still a bit drier than average through Scandinavia and far north of Europe. And it's wetter through the UK and Ireland, probably into northern France, Spain, Portugal. I would suspect that's going to extend uh, through there. So, there'll be a wetter phase through there, probably. That includes the low countries, Germany, Poland, probably. Uh, and then drier again as we come down into Mediterranean, most parts of there from uh, eastern Spain, eastwards, looking uh, mainly dry there all the way over towards Greece and Turkey. Week 4 will be the 31st of October to 7th of November. And uh, we get a ridge then building across many parts of Europe in this week. So high pressure, I will think, is pushing northwards from the south and is taking the low pressure away to northwest. The jet stream will be going northwards as well. It's probably turning drier, but it would be another very mild scenario that I would have thought. 500 millibar height anomaly shows again uh, above average heights, high pressure dominating through that first week of November. Remember, it's the 31st of November, 31st of October. 7th of November. Um, temperature anomaly is still above average away from the extreme eastern, southeastern part of Europe. Most areas again continue to have above normal temperatures of around 1 to 3 degrees. Not quite as warm to average um, as is in weeks 1 and 2, but that could be because it's like three weeks away, so the signal is weaker. Overall, it's another very, very mild week. By a bit there for the first week of November. And um, precipitation anomalies look like that. So much of southern Europe is drier than normal. So a little bit wetter than normal to the very far north. I reckon it's turning a bit drier as so that high pressure is moving up from uh, the south, though. So uh, probably these areas are turning drier as well, I would have thought. Right, week four will be the 7th to the 14th of November. High pressure there may be starting to pull out in towards the Atlantic, but looks like it could still be reaching um, in that fashion. Some lower pressure down here and some low pressure up there. Let's have a look at the 500 millibar height anomaly for week four. A large ridge really extending through from the Atlantic into West Europe. Still some low pressure up here. The temperature anomaly looks like that. So it's still more or less above average, really, in most areas. Um, above average from like the far west over towards the east side of Europe. I suppose like the UK, Ireland, France, Germany, we're reverting back towards no signal, which might be a sign. I would have thought of that ridge, that's probably a sign like uh, frost and fog beginning to develop and start to pull down 
the overall temperature along. Remember, it is November now, so the nights are going to be very long and the high pressure could start to get cooler. Um, and uh, the precipitation anomaly is a weakening signal, but it looks pretty dry, doesn't it, from like the far west of Europe over towards that eastern side. That's the sway there. Maybe a bit wetter in the med and possibly a little bit wetter from the Norwegian Sea and towards Norway. Right, so that's your uh, first day look at done. Let's just have a look, a look at weeks five and six data before we go, because why not? So week five will be the 14th, 21st of November. Uh, size of changes here. High pressure is moving into the middle of the North Atlantic, so the Middle Atlantic Ridge is getting going. Trough of low pressure uh, into Scandinavia that might be starting to pull something colder into the north and west of Europe. A bit of high pressure over on the east side of Europe might bring something a bit warmer up. That eastern side of Europe, let's have a look at 500 millibar heights, uh, looks like that. So, um, the high pressure there is in the Atlantic. There's a trough of low of Scandinavia. That might start to bring something a bit cold into the north, west of Europe. High pressure over here could pull up something warmer at the eastern side of Europe. The uh, week five temperature anomaly. It's just above average, actually. So despite all of that, uh, the model is still going for above average temperature. But it's going a bit cold in the Norwegian Sea, but most places still uh, above normal with their temperature. And uh, precipitation-wise, looks a bit wetter for Scandinavia. I think there's a trough game going over Scandinavia. It's probably been something more unsettled and colder through there. Southern parts of Europe into the Med uh, looks unsettled. And around the UK and Ireland, looks relatively dry. And then finally, for week 6, which is the 21st, 28th, of November looks like that. So uh, again, we've got high pressure in the Atlantic. It's inching its way further north towards Greenland as well. Could that be the trigger to start pulling something a bit colder into the north and west of Europe? Let's have a look at 500 millibar heights, see what they're doing. So uh, definite sort of mid-Atlantic ridge type pattern. She's trying to extend up towards Greenland uh, as well. This area, I would have thought it's like to fill up with a trough of low pressure and the jet stream dipping through like that, which would be unsettled. The temperature anomaly is cooling down, so uh, the warmest weather now is in the far east and southeast of Europe and out in the Atlantic. This area could be going cooler, actually, through here. It could be going uh, quite a bit cooler, I reckon, there in the third week of November, or the final week of November. And then, uh, finally, uh, precipitation-wise, we look like that. So just a little bit driving average uh, west-southwest of Europe, and western average like into the train driving average over here on the eastern side of Europe. Quite a weak signal, though. Right, uh, well, that's it for the EC per day look ahead uh, for this week. So it's just a snapshot of what the model is showing could look completely different when we look at it again uh, on Tuesday for the European Outlook. We will look at it though on Saturday morning uh, with a focus on the UK and on Ireland as well. So uh, that's going to be an interesting watch on Saturday morning. Might have a bit of a laugh with that one, who knows. Right, well, that's it for that. We'll be back uh, shortly with a tent of auditing there. That's going to include all our break features. Sorry for running late today, everyone. But uh, <laughs> I had a relaxing, uh, restful morning after my uh, festivities yesterday. Anyway, change of 14 day on the way soon. Thank you, Shadow, to ecm.it for supplying the charts. That's all for now. And thanks for watching.